Today we are discussing Gareth Medic Logic Units or A L U's. So, as the name implies, an arithmetic logic unit is a subcircuit or a component of generally a microcontroller or CPU that performs arithmetic operations. And its circuit symbol, something like this, two inputs, let's call them A. B and output Y. And if this performs more than one arithmetic operation, which generally would, we also need a signal that is going to be basically our selection code S, or called for short the op code. So our inputs, our operands, or A and B, our output is Y, and based on the opcode, we will do some particular arithmetic operation. So in this lecture, we're going to design a very simple ALU that does addition or subtraction on 4-bit numbers. Then we're going to modify it so that we add two other operations, incrementing and decrementing the input A. So very uh, famous in, in the history of computer development, uh, ALU was the 74181, introduced in 1970, which was a 4-bit ALU. And this found its way into many of the groundbreaking uh, 1970s so-called mini-computers, which were kind of a bridge between the mainframe computers of the 1960s and the microcomputers or the, the personal computers of the 1980s. Now, as a, as a four bit ALU, and, and the ALU we're going to design uh, today is going to be a four bit ALU, uh, although with not nearly as many operations as the 74181, um, of course, you're limited to not very large numbers with four bits, but you can, with a little bit of logic glue, you can paste two four-bit ALUs together to make an eight-bit ALU and etc. You could be keep combining them together. And we've seen in our previous lectures, when we've talked about things like decoders and multiplexers, how we can do that. If we have, you know, a two-bit operation, we can glue those two of those together to get a four bit and two of those we can glue together to get an eight bit operation and so on. So almost all, uh, well, virtually all, I would say, uh, microcontrollers and CPUs have some form of an arithmetic logic unit. Now, typically uh, these do not do or do not perform so-called loading point arithmetic you know so that would be you know operations on numbers in scientific not notation like you know 3.17 times 10 to the 8th or something multiplied by some other scientific uh, floating point number in the early days of of uh PCs and, and uh, microcomputers, people would build floating point units to do these kinds of operations, and then they would interface those with the CPU. Um, alternately, you could try to, uh, through software, make your uh, ALU, which ba that basically does integer types of arithmetic. Uh, with some software, you could make that do floating point arithmetic, but it was, it was quite slow. So the FPUs would speed that up considerably. 
And these days, almost any decent uh, CPU will have an FPU module integrated into it. All right, so let's uh, look at a 4-bit arithmetic logic unit, which performs just two operations. Add operation for addition, and a sub operation for subtraction. And by the way, this opcode here, which, which in our case is going to just be one bit, it's going to represent either an add or a sub, uh, those would form the basis of what we call machine language or assembly language. It is the, the native language of the CPU or the microcontroller unit. And instead of you know, the ones and zeros that would make up the opcode in assembly language, we'd often give those names like add or sub so that it was a little more obvious to the user what was, was being accomplished. Now, it can be pretty painful to program a CPU or a microcontroller in assembly language. And that has, you know, there, there are some applications where you need to do that. But largely, we've, you know, over the decades, uh, developed higher level languages like the C programming language or Java and things like that, which do higher level operations that are much more user friendly to, to the user. But if we want to understand the, the digital logic circuit, then we have to get down at this level where we're actually looking at the opcodes that trigger the ALU to do different operations. So, oh, we've already developed in previous lectures the components that we need to, to make this simple ALU with add and sub operations. Here's a block diagram of it. We're going to have here four bit adder. It's going to have our selection signal. Yes. Here. And output Y. Input A. And then from an input B. Multiplexer. We're going to. Choose between B itself or an inverted version of that. And that multiplexer then is triggered selection by the opcode selection signal S. So let's see how this works now. So this input here is going to be the, the carry in, and then here is the A operator operand rather and then y is the output now these aren't going to be single bit signals but rather a and the b are going to be buses that carry more than one signal more wire so this put a slash through that and a number four re representing the fact that this actually is four bits of information it would be four wires in a circuit here so that the four bits Output is S is a single bit, so it's not a bus, just a wire. And so what does this do? Well, when S is equal to zero, our previous four bit adder that we developed in the previous lecture, we'll just add its two inputs. Okay, and if S is zero, and that's the selection signal for the, the MUX here, multiplexer then it's going to select the first input, which is just going to be B. So when S is 0, we're just going to have A and B as our two op operands for this adder. And the carry in bit will be 0 because S is equal to 0. And this will just add those two 4-bit numbers to give you an output. So S is equal to 0. You'll get Y equals 
a plus b. Now, when s is equal to 1, what happens? Well, if s is equal to 1, the multiplexer is going to take and route through the second signal. What is that? Well, that is going to be 4 bits of b, which have been negated and toggled 0 to 1, 1 to 0. Remember, that would be a representation of the negative of b in 1's complement. And if you've got a, if you have a positive number and you just toggle all all the digits, the most significant di digit treated like a sign bit, then you get one's complement. Okay, So then you would be adding A and B in one's complement, but S is also equal to 1, and that goes into the carry in. So we add one more into that sum. Now remember, if you take one's complement and you add 1, you get two's complement, which is very convenient. For performing subtraction because you just you just add the first number with the two's complement of the second so that's what happens here when s is equal to one you're going to get y a minus b and because that can be that can be negative what we're going to do here is we're going to take a b and y are going to be in Choose complement so that they can be either positive or negative. Certainly, y has to be uh, in that, that format. But in general, you might be adding a positive number to a negative number or subtracting a negative number from something. Or, so, this just gives us more uh, versatility. Now, with, um, with that, remember that a <clears throat> four bit number in choose complement would have. You know, a, a digit, let's say, here's your A3, A2, A1, and A0. And the A0 is that bit, either 0, 1 is, if you want to put this in decimal format, be 1 times that, then 2 times A1, and then 4 times A2, and then minus 8 times A3. That's how we can represent Negative numbers, if, if the A3 bit is zero, then we have no negative component. And the biggest positive number we can have is four plus two plus one is seven. And so we can be less than or equal to seven. A has got to be less than or equal to seven. And what's the most negative it can be? Well, if A3 is one and A2, one and zero are all zero, then we just have minus eight. And then with other arrangements of the bits, we can represent anything between minus 8 and plus 7. So if our output, either the sum of a and b or the difference, would fall out of this range, then we have a problem with what we call overflow. Overflow, if the output y is greater than 7 or less than minus 8. And so with a more sophisticated ALU, we would probably have an additional, call it uh, F flags, that would indicate to the CPU that some overflow condition had occurred, which would be an error. All right, now we, we worked out how to build a four bit adder, uh, but when we talked about multiplexers, those only had one bit inputs and one bit outputs. How do we get four bit input and four bits output? Well, we can just stack four of them one on top of the other, do something like this. So here will be, say, A0, B0, output Y0, and then A1, B1, output Y1,
A2 on B1. I said B1 and wrote B0. A2, B2. And I'll put Y2. And finally, Three, three with output by three, and they'll all share the same select. Select signal, okay. So if S is equal to zero, then each of these has a select signal of zero. And we know that that would mean that the output y0 would be equal to the first input a0. Output y1 would be the first input a1, and etc. Now, if s is equal to 1, then each one of these 2 to 1 single bit multiplexers would select the second input. So b0 would be routed to y0, b1 to y1, and so on. So that's going to be our, that's this guy right here what it looks like in the actual implementation. And we already worked out in a previous lecture, this two to one multiplexer. Very well. Now we also, in this, need a four bit inverter. That's pretty straightforward. So it's gonna look something like this. A one bit inverter, just as a not gate. Say we have a0 and maps to y0. Well, if we want uh, a four bit inverter, we just have four of those. Oops. Okay, and that's what we mean by this uh, block right there, because it's applied to a 4-bit bus, it must have four actual not gates. Okay, so we'll implement that. And with that, we should then have our, uh, our ALU. Pretty much that simple. So let's go ahead and go into uh, Logic Circuit and implement that and test it out. So here we are in Logic Circuit, and we've got a number of modules here. We start out with the two to one multiplexer, single bit multiplexer, we uh, designed in a previous lecture. So this is the selection signal when S is equal to zero, A gets routed to the output Y, and when S is one, the B input gets routed to Y. Here is a full adder that we worked out in the previous lecture. Um, here we've got a carry in bit and then A and B operand bits. And our outputs are the sum bit and the carry out bit. Now we can start to put those together to make larger modules. Here is a four of those two to one uh, single bit multiplexers stacked up to make a bus multiplexer, a four bit bus uh, input mapped to a 4-bit bus output. When S is equal to 0, the A bits, A0 through A3, get mapped to Y0 to Y3. And when S is 1, the B inputs, B0 to B3, get mapped to the Y outputs. There's a 4-bit bus inverter. Just four inverters for each of the four bits stack on top of each other. And... Here's the four bit adder with carry in and carry out. We designed this in the last lecture. It's just a, an iteration of four full adders. Remember, we could have used a half adder here, but using a full adder allows us the flexibility with this carry in bit to um, make the adder into a subtractor. All right, so here's our arithmetic logic unit, what we called ALU1 in the lecture. We've got our adder over here. 
our bus multiplexer here and our 4-bit inverter there. So when our selection signal is zero, well then for this multiplexer, it's gonna choose the first set of inputs. That's just gonna be these B values. They'll go right through the multiplexer and into the B inputs of our adder. And the A inputs, of course, will come over to the A inputs. And this will just add A plus B. Now, these four bits, A0 to A3, B0 to B3, Y0 to Y3, we're not going to use the Y4 here. If we were to put two of these together to try and make a, an 8-bit ALU, we could, we could use that carry out. We're not going to make use of it here. Uh, these are numbers, 4-bit numbers, in 2's complement. We'll come back to that in a minute. So they can be either positive or negative numbers. We can do addition and subtraction of positive and negative numbers. Okay, so if S is 0, we just showed that this is just going to add A0 plus B0. If S is 1, what happens? Okay, go down to the multiplexer. If S is 1, we're going to choose the second set of inputs. Well, what, those are the ones that come from this 4-bit inverter. Those are just the B values inverted. Well, that's B represented as a negative number in 1's complement when you just invert each one of the, of the bit values. So we're going to take A plus the 1's complement of B and those are going to be put into the adder. But S is also equal to 1 here, so that's going to be also be the carry in. Remember, if we add 1 to the 1's complement, we get the 2's complement. And that works out really nice for representing negative numbers and being able to add a positive and negative number to do subtraction. Okay, so this should give us, when S is 0, the sum of these two numbers. And when S is 1, the difference of the two numbers. So let's set up a test circuit here, turn it on, power on. So this is our select, selection signal, our operation code, op code. And this is our A input. Now notice they're in two's complement. This is the one's bit, the two's bit, the four's bit, and the minus eight bit. Okay, so this allows us to represent numbers from minus eight, and then adding positive numbers, we get minus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. That's minus 1. And then if we get rid of the minus 8, then we have 4 plus 2 plus 1 is plus 7. So we can go all the way from minus 8 to plus 7. And if the, the two opera, operands we're adding or subtracting give a result that's not in the range of minus 8 to plus 7, then we're going to get an overflow problem, and this output will not be valid. So let's take a look at this. 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 is 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 is 2. Now here we've got 2 plus 1, that's 3, plus 1 is 4. How about 3 plus 3? That's 6, 4 plus 2, and so on. What if we want to subtract? Well, 3 minus 3 is 0. How about 2 minus 3? Now that's minus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, which is minus 1. Correct? Let's go back to addition and see about this overflow problem. So there's 3 plus 3 is 6. Okay. So if we add just one more to that, let's do 4 plus 3. That should be 7. And I'll add one more. We get minus 8, which is wrong. It should be plus 8. Well, that's an overflow problem. Right, we had a, our output was not in the range of minus 8 to plus 7. So we got an incorrect result. Now, if we were making a little more sophisticated type of ALU, we would probably want to have an additional output, which would be, say, an overflow flag. And that would tell you that your, your output, your result was suffered from overflow, so it wouldn't be correct. All right, let's uh, let's and let's look at the overflow problem for subtraction. So here we've got um, zero minus uh, uh, subtraction. We turn that on um, minus uh, four plus two plus one. That's which is seven. Zero minus seven is minus seven, which is minus eight plus one. So that works. That's correct. Now. Let's take a negative number and subtract 7. Let's do negative 1. What is that? Well, that's minus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1 is minus 1. 
So minus 1, minus 7 is minus 8. That's still in the range of minus 8 to 7, so that's, that's a correct result. Now let's let this be, so this is um, minus 1, let's make it minus 2, so minus 2 minus 7 should be minus 9, but what, what do we get? 4 plus 2 plus 1 is plus 7. That's not correct. Well, that's because our operation produced a result that was not in the range of minus 8 to 7. So if we wanted to do that calculation, we'd need more bits. And of course we could make by, um, well, let's, let's stop that guy there now. Um, you know, by just making these these four bit uh, adders into say eight bit adders, and likewise for our inverters and our uh, multiplexers and, and, and the like, we could make an eight bit ALU, and they could handle a larger range of numbers. Now let's uh, modify our ALU. See how we can go about adding two other operations. We'll call these ink for increment and dec for decrement. And by that we mean increment operation y will be equal to a plus 1. So we'll take the input a and add 1 to it. And then for the decrement operation y will be equal to a minus one. So now we'll have four operations. And let's write them over here in a little table. We'll have add, sub, so addition and subtraction, increment, and decrement. So these will be our, our operations, our ops. And our op code now, since we have four operations, we need at least two bits to represent that. So we'll have two bits in our op code, S1 and S0. And so let's take, uh, when S1 is equal to zero, let's have our ALU behave exactly like the, the previous one designed. So S0 is zero, we'll add, S1 is one, we'll subtract A and B, All right? So this will be, y equals a plus b, all in two's complement, and y equals a minus b. Then when s1 is equal to 1, we'll do the increment and decrement operations. When s0 is equal to 0, we'll do uh, increment, and that'll be also an addition, but not a plus b, but a plus 1. And when s0 is equal to 1, now we'll do decrement, which will be subtraction a minus 1. Now, that's a convenient way to assign these. We could have assigned these codes in any manner we want, but this is kind of convenient because when s0 is equal to 0, in either case, we're doing an addition, and when it's 1, we're doing a subtraction. And so we can see that the, the increment operations can just be a plus or minus B with B is equal to 1. So it keeps our circuit kind of simple. Okay, so how could we go about adding this capability? Let's see. Let's modify our previous design. So we had the... Uh, Four bit adder here. They'll have the output will be Y, and that's going to be a four bit bus. We're going to have our input uh, here. Our input will be A four bit bus, and then our like our B input will be down here, and now that's gonna go through some, as it did before, some multiplexers, depending on whether we wanna add or subtract, and whether we want to add or subtract the input B or replace B by, by one. So let's, uh, let's 
left here. Multiplexer. Four bit bus. As we did before. Four bit bus, and it's going to allow us either to take B or put B into one's complement. Then, with the addition of, of adding a carry in bit of one, then we can do subtraction. And then over here, we have another multiplexer. And we're going to input B and other option will be the number one four bits. Okay, so if we make the selection for this 0001 input, then that becomes our B, and then we can add or subtract that, and then we'll get the increment and decrement operations. As before, Our carry in, and this will be our selection operation. Our S0, which was like our S in the previous AOU. And now our new S1 here is going to turn on this uh, replacement of B by 1. Let's see, over here. Now, let's see, we could do this. Okay. All right, there's our modified ALU. Let's see what happens. So if S1 is equal to zero, then this first multiplexer just takes B as from the input and maps that to the output. So it then does nothing different than what our previous ALU did. It just B is the input here. And now, with in response to S0 is equal to 1 or 0, we either push B into our adder or the 1's complement of B. And if S0 is equal to 0, our carry-in is 0, and we're adding A and B. But if S0 is 1, our carry-in is 1. So we take this 1's complement of B, add 1, we get the 2's complement, add that to A, and that gives us A minus B, so as before. And all that changes here when S1 is equal to 1, is that now we just replace B by 1. And so we do the same operations, but with B replaced by 1. So we either add 1 or subtract 1. Okay, so that should, uh, should do it. So now we have a, a couple more operations. And we could go on and, and continue to add ever more operations. Uh, and our circuit would get you know, more and more complex. And it's clear also that we would want to be careful and uh, strategic about how we chose these opcodes. So that like in this case, if we keep, keep the same S0 value for the addition operation, the addition and increment operation, and the same for the sub and the decrement, that makes things much simpler because we just keep our same previous ALU and then just add in this ability with the S1 bit to be able to replace B by just the value of one. So let's go into logic circuit and see how this can be built and how it performs. Here we are back in logic circuit and this is our ALU2, which added the ability to do increment and decrement operations. So we added this additional bit to our operation code, our opcode. So now when S1 is equal to one, it's gonna do either increment or decrement depending on the value of S0. So let's see how this work, works. So say S1 is equal to zero. So this then should 
act just like our previous AOU, the AOU1, and just do addition or subtraction based on the value of S0. So let's see what happens when S1 is equal to 0. Well, it comes over here, and for this multiplexer, if S1 is 0, it takes the first set of inputs, the A inputs here. Those are just the B inputs. So it'll just pass those through, and then we've got the B inputs and the inversion of those, which is B as a negative number in one's complement, going over to this multiplexer, controlled by S0, and that's exactly what we had in ALU1. So when S0 is equal to 0, we will get the sum of A and B. When S0 is equal to 1, we'll get the sum of A and minus B in 1's complement, but plus S0 is equal to 1 is the carry in, which puts it into 2's complement, so we get the difference of A and B. Now, if S1 is equal to 1, what happens? Well, then this 4-bit bus multiplexer will select the second set of inputs. And these are what? So starting from the least significant bit, 1, 0, 0, 0. So that's just uh, 0 times minus 8, 0 times 4, 0 times 2, 1 times 1. So it's just 1. Okay, So 1 comes through here uh, at the output of that multiplexer. And now, based on the value of S0 being 0 or 1, we will take that 1 and add it to A. If S0 is equal to 0, that's the increment operation. Or we'll subtract it from A if S0 is equal to 1. And that's the decrement operation. Okay, so we've added some functionality to our ALU. Here's our test circuit. So if S1 is equal to 0, then we should just get... If S0 is equal to 0, we should just get what we had before with ALU1, just an addition. 1 plus 1 is 2, 3 plus 1 is 4, and so on. If S0 is equal to 1, we should get the difference. 3 minus 1 is 2. Uh, 3 minus 4 is minus 1, which is in 2's complement is minus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. Minus 8 plus 7 is minus 1. Uh, here we've got 4 plus 2 plus 1 is 7. Minus 4 is equal to 3, okay, etc. Okay, so that seems to work. Now, if we toggle the S1 bit of our operation code, then we are doing the increment. So here's 0 plus 1 is 1. 3, 2 plus 1, 3 incremented gets you 4. 6 incremented gets you 7, and so on. If we now toggle S0, we should get the decrement. So here's 4 plus 2 is 6, minus 1 should be 5, which is 4 plus 1. Or 2 minus 1 is 1, 3 minus 1 is 2, and so on. Okay, so now we have a nice little uh, arithmetic logic unit. It can handle 4-bit numbers here in 2's complement uh, and produce these 4-bit uh, output bits in 2's complement. And we have four operations, addition and subtraction, increment, and decrement. Now let's turn our attention to multipliers. We've seen previously how to build circuits that perform addition and subtraction. But multiplication is more complicated, as you know from your elementary school days where you learn to do these operations. Of course, division is even more complicated still. We're not going to get into division, but we're just going to look at multiplication. All right. Now, it's pretty easy if we have one-bit numbers. Let's say A and B. So A and B are each either 0 or 1. Because in that case, a times B is simply the logical AND operation, A and B. And we can see that by just writing the truth table. There's A, B, and then A times B. So we have possibilities, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. 0 times 0 is 0. Second, uh, this is row 0 and row 1. 0 times 1 is 0, 
then the next row, 1 times 0 is 0, and then finally, 1 times 1 is 1. And of course, if we look at that, that is just A and B. So for 1-bit numbers, an AND gate performs multiplication. Okay, so we've got here. A and B as inputs, and the output here is A and B, which for one bit numbers is the same as A times B. Now, how about for uh, say two bit numbers? Uh, now it gets a little more complicated. So let's say A has two bits, A1 and A0, and B has two bits, B1, and B0. So how do we do this, this multiplication? So let's first look at a specific example. Let's take A is equal to 1, 1, and B is equal to 1, 1. Right, in decimal, that's A is equal to 3. It's 2 plus 1, and B is equal to 3. And so we should get the product 3 times 3 is equal to 9. And what is 9 in binary? It's 8 plus no 4s plus no 2s plus 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Okay, now how did we learn in elementary school to do multiplication? Well, we would write the digits of the first factor in a row, and then the digits of the next factor in, an, in the next row. We're going to do multiplication here. So, we first take the least significant digit of the second factor and multiply that through by all of the digits in the first factor. We'd have 1 times 1, 1, and then 1 times 1 is 1. Now we go down to the next row, and we're gonna, that's going to correspond to the next most significant digit in the second factor, this one here. We're going to do 1 times 1 is 1. But now, since this is actually in the 2's place, that really represents 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2. So we shift over one column. This is the shifting operation. So 1 times 1 is 1, and the whole thing is times 2. 1 times 1 is 1. And, of course, that actually is in now the th not the 1's or the 2's, but the 4's column. Those are called partial products. So we form the partial products. And for a two-bit number, there will be two of those. Now we add those. OK, now when we've shifted over here in this second row, uh, the place we left blank, that really represents a 0. There are zero ones, one two, and 1, 4. So, we do our sum starting at the right with the least significant bit. 1 plus 0 is 1. Then we have 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. Remember, though, that 1, 1 is 1, 1 plus 1, 2, which is equal to 3. And 1, 0 is equal to 1, 2 plus 0, 1s, which is equal to 2. This is just base 10 and the other. In, um, Base 2. Okay, so we have 1 plus 1. That's equal to 2. So that's equal to 2. So write the 0 and carry the 1. Now, and this is the 1's column, the 2's column, this is the 4's column. We got 1 plus 1. And well, against that, again, that's 1, 0. So write the 0, carry the 1, and there's your answer. And it is indeed 1, 0, 0, 1, which represents 9. So 3 times 3 is the 9. That's the process. Now let's look at it, the same process, but for arbitrary bits. Let's write out A1 and A0. Space here. And B1 and B0. We want to take the product of those. OK, we go to the least significant digit of B, that's B0, and then go through and take the product of that with all the digits of A. So 
B0 times A0, we'll write that as A0, B0. B0 times A1, we'll write as A1, B0. Then we go over to the next most significant digit, B1, and then take that B1 times all of the digits of A, B1 times A0. But because we shifted over here, that, that B1 really represents 2 times B1, so we have to shift from the 1's column to the 2's column. B1 times A0, which we'll write as B0, B1. And then B1 times A1, shift over another column, A1, B1. And then we're going to add those up. Now, something to note is right, this least significant uh, bit column, that corresponds to 2 to the 0, which is 1. The next to the left would be 2 to the 1, which is 2. And the next to the left of that would be 2 to the 2, which is 4. And if we need the next to the left of that, would be 2 to the 3, 8, eights column. Now, notice here, this product A0, B0, the subscripts sum to 0. Over here in this, the 2 to the 1 column, A1, B0, the subscripts sum to 1 plus 0 is 1. And A0, B1, likewise, sum to 0 plus 1 is 1. And then here in the 2 to the 2 column, the 4s column, A1, B1, the subscripts sum to 1 plus 1 equal to 2. So that's just uh, kind of tells you a little bit about the structure uh, of the way we do these partial uh, products. Because this B1 is actually the 2's column digit for B, that's why we have to shift everything over. And, and it shows up in that uh, subscript bookkeeping. Okay, so now we add. So A0, B0 plus 0, well, that's just A0, B0. And we'll just call that Y0. That's the 1's column bit of the product. Then we have A1, B0 plus A0, B1. That's the sum of two bits. Now, that will produce, to show this is coming down, that will produce a sum bit, which we'll call Y1, but it can also produce a carry bit. And let's do that in, in red here. Carry bit's going to go and sum into the next most significant column. Now we go over to the 2 squared or the 4's column. We've got that carry bit plus A1, B1, and that's going to be a sum of two bits, uh, which will have a sum bit that's going to be Y3, and a carry bit which doesn't get summed to anything, there's nothing left to sum, which uh, forms the Y4. So there are the four bits of the product. Now the question is, how can we uh, build that in a circuit? Okay. So here's how we can do that. First thing to notice is that we require all products, which will be all and operations between each bit of A and each bit of B. So we've got A0, B0, A1, B0, A0, B1, A1, B1. So there'll be there are two bits in each of the operators, uh, uh, operands, and, and therefore we're going to have four partial products. Well, we can implement that, say, as follows. Here's going to be A1, A0, B1, B0 and just pull off from the wires any value we need. We're just going to have all possible products that is all possible and functions B0, A0, be there, and we know that actually is Y0. And then we're going to have B0 times A1. Here, zero times a one. We're going to have, oops, good. 
we're going to have B1 times A0. Anymore. B1 times A0. And then finally, we're going to have uh, B1 times A1. One time. So there are all of those uh, bit products implemented as ands and gates. Now for the sum. OK, A0, B0 is our Y0. Then we've, we've got to take the sum of A1, B0, and A0, B1. That's of these two guys. So let's what that actually is calculating of it. This is A0, B, oh, let's put it right. A0, B0. Uh, then we've got A1, B0, and A0, B1. And then we've got A1, B1. So... We need the sum a1, b0, and a0, b1. There's no carry in, so we can use a half adder that has just a sum bit and a carry bit out. So we can do this here. These are our two inputs, like our a and b inputs, and we all have a sum and a carry, half adder. Now, we take the carry out of that operation and add it to A1, B1. Okay, so the carry out here is going to get added into A1, B1. And that's going to have, so this will be our half adder here. It's going to have a sum bit and a carry out bit. Now, the sum bit here from the, the sum right here, that's Y1. The sum from the next column is y3, and the carry bit is y4. So that is our implementation in terms of these, these guys here are half adders. If we don't have a carry uh, input carry bit, then we don't need a full adder, right? So let's go and look in the logic circuit and build this uh, and then test it, see if it works. Well, here we are in logic circuit and we need, in addition to our AND gates, we need two components, the half adder. Okay, here's the half adder, the exclusive OR between A and B give us the sum bit and then the AND between them give us the carry out bit and the full adder where we have a carry in as well as A and B and we worked this out in a previous previous lecture. Here's your sum bit and your carry out. Okay, your two by two multiplier. Here's what we sketched out. So we've got all the possible products, uh, B0, A0, B0, A1 uh, here, uh, B1, A0, and B1, A1. The product of the least significant bits, uh, A0 and B0 is your Y0. And then we had to add the B0, A1, and B1, A0 bits. Do that in half adder because there's no carry in. We get a sum bit. That's our Y1 digit. And then the carry goes into the next column. And there, we're going to take the most significant uh, bit of the products, B1, A1. And that's in the fours column. And we add in this carry bit. And the sum bit is the Y2, right? That's the fours column digit of the product. And then any, any carry would be going to the, into the uh, uh, two to the third or the eights column. That's Y3. So let's, uh, let's test this. So here's our, right? So this produces this little block here. We pull that into a test circuit. We have now toggle buttons for the A and B values and then LEDs to show the, uh, the output uh, bit values. Now, we're just looking at only the product of positive numbers here. So we're not using two's complement or sign bits or anything like that. 
So that would, that would be another subtlety you'd add into all, all the things we're doing. Let's wire this up and let's see. So uh, I can make A be anything I want and I get zero because B is zero. Zero times anything is zero. So if I said B zero is equal to one, A zero is equal to one. One times one is one. One times two is two. One times three is two plus one is three. How about two times one is two. Two times two is four. Two times three is, well, four plus two is six. And then how about three times three? It's eight plus one is nine. Oh yes, this circuit works as advertised. Now let's think about the product of three bit numbers. So we're gonna have a equals a2, a1, a0, and b equals b2, b1, b0. So let's represent this product here. Here's a2. Uh, do a1 a and a0. b2. B1 and B0. Product there. So we go through, we take B0 times each of these digits. So we're going to get A0, B0, A1, B0, A2, B0. Then we go over to the twos column. So we're going to have to shift our partial product over. B1 times A0. So we're going to have A0, B1, A1, B1, A2, 1. Now we go over here to the fours column, B2 times each of these digits, and that's got two shifts. So we go shift 1, 2, A0, B2. A0, B2, and A1, B2, and A2. And again, notice the pattern with the subscripts. In this column, 1 plus 0, 0 plus 1, that adds up to 1. In this column, 2 plus 0, 1 plus 1, and 0 plus 2 adds up to 2, and 3, and 4. Now we are going to sum those. Okay, so this doesn't sum to anything or sums to zero, if you want to say that. We're going to get y zero. And then here you're going to have the sum of two bits, so there'll be a sum bit. That's going to be y one. And then we'll have carry bit. It's going to go up and add to these numbers. Now here we have a little bit of a difficulty because we are trying to sum three bits plus a carry in. We don't have a circuit that does that. So here is what we're going to do. We're going to have a partial or intermediate sum. We're going to rewrite this whole process here. Um, A0. A1, A2, B2, B1, B0. Off from there. We're going to get these partial bit by bit products. Here we'll have A0, B0. A1, B0, A2, B0, and we're just going to write two of them. Now we're going to go to B1 times these, right? This is going to be this second row here. And so that's going to be A0, B1, A1, B1, and A2, B1. Stop there for now. And we're going to sum those. And let's use a, a dashed line to represent this is not the final sum. So we already know that the A0, B0, that's going to that's gonna give us our 
down here. Or y0. We're going to sum a1b0 plus a0b1. That's going to produce a sum bit. It's going to be y1. And a carry bit. So that carry bit, oops. That carry bit. I'm going to go and sum with these two bits. Now that's fine because a full adder will do that. It has a carry in and then two uh, input bits. And that's going to produce a sum bit. And now we're going to call that sum bit x2. We're later going to have to add, this is, we're over in the fours column, right? That's this column right here. We're going to later have to add in a0, b2 to that. So this is only a partial sum. Okay, so we add these, we're going to get a sum bit, and we can get a pick carry bit too. And we're going to take that over, sum it right here. Now we've got a carry in bit, and this bit, sum of two bits. So that'll have a sum bit, and we're going to call that x3. And the carry bit, we're going to call x4. Okay, and that's the, those are the digits of a partial sum. We could have called this x1 and this x0, but then they're just gonna trivially become y1 and y0. So we'll just stop with that. Okay, now what we're gonna do <clears throat> is add this third column in to the sum of the first and second columns. So we're gonna have now x4, x3, and x2, and then we're going to have these three bits here. <clears throat> so we got the two to the two column, the fours column. We've got a0 and b0. That uh, I'm sorry, and b2, a0 and b2, and zero plus two is equal to two, and then a1. And B2, 1 plus 2 is 3. And then A2 and B2 and 2 plus 2 is 4. And we're going to add those. And that's going to give us the additional bits in our, in our product. Okay, so we're going to add those. So some of these two bits is going to produce a sum bit. And that's going to be Y2, the next most significant bit in the total product. And there can be carry bit. And now we'll have sum these two bits plus a carry in bit. And the sum of those will sum bit is going to be y3. And that sum produce a carry, which we then add into with x4 and a2b2. <clears throat> and the sum bit there is going to be y4. And that can produce a carry which doesn't have to be added to anything else. And so that carry bit itself just becomes the most significant bit, y5. So now here, right, the product of two three-bit numbers is a one, two, three, four, five, six-bit number. And in general, the product of two n-bit numbers has n-squared bits. All right, so this is a little more complicated. Um, but let's go ahead and go into logic circuit and see how we can build this circuit and then test it. Okay, here is our three bit uh, multiplier. Here are three input bits for A and B. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine bit products bit by bit products like you know a0 b0 all the way to a2 b2 our least significant uh, product here a0 b0 is just y0 then we take the sum of a1 b0 and a0 b1 and that sum bit is y1 and then we carry that out now and so since that had no carry in we can use a half adder now here we need a full adder because we have carry in and we add that to the bits A2, B0, and A1, B1. And that sum we called X2. Uh, intermediate sum. The carry out of that 
we added in A to B1, and since we have only one uh, AND output to put into that, we can use a half adder here and put the carry into one of the inputs of the half adder. And that's some bit we called X3, and then the carry from that we called X4. So there is our, our X, we could have called this uh, X0 and X1, and then X2, X3, and X4. Okay, so in the next stage, we then take, um, we have to sum X2 and A0, B2. Let's see, A0, B2 here, and X2. And the sum bit there is Y2, and then the carry bit goes into the next sum, which is the sum uh, of that carry bit X3 and A1, B2. And so the sum bit there is Y3, carry bit goes into the next sum, and that sum is, in addition to that carry bit, the sum of X4, and A2, B2. And the sum bit there is the Y4 output, and then the carry is Y5. Okay, so this makes a block that has uh, six input bits, six output bits, goes up as this like chip diagram there, and here's our test circuit. And so let's test this out, see how it works. So uh, one times one is one, times two is two, times four is four, seven is seven. Let's look at seven times seven. What is seven times seven? It's 49. Let's see. 32 plus 16 is 48, plus one is 49. And go through it by any combination of products, and this circuit will calculate that.